All right, guys, how's it going? Bikes and Brass back at you here. Want to do a quick and dirty video on what you have to do to buy a Humvee from Gov Planet and get it to your house. Um, I will talk about street legalization in another video because that's a whole other process. I'm going to keep this quick and brief. I can't go over every single little thing because uh, I just tried to do that and the video was like almost half an hour long. So I, I'm not going to do that. Let me know if you want a detailed video in the comments because if enough interest is, you know, if there's enough interest for that type of thing, I can go back and do one. For now, I'm going to keep this quick and, and just go over the important things. So first things first, you're going to want to go to govplan.com. Okay, from there, you're going to create an account. You enter in all this information. Um, there are some re approval things that you're gonna have to do, like you're, you're gonna have to get approved to bid. Um, there's some other stuff. I don't quite remember everything I did, but the, the most important thing is just work with GovPlanet on this. Sometimes they screw up. They screwed up one time, I remember with me, on one of the approval process things. Just call their phone number, wherever it is here. Uh, here, contact us. They have their phone number right here. Just go ahead and call it. They will help you. you ha you're gonna spend a lot of time on hold, but the people are actually pretty helpful, even though they're, they're uh, a bit understaffed. Okay, so you wanna create your account. You wanna get everything approved. The next thing you're going to do, once you're approved to bid, is you'll search for a Humvee. Now, small side note, I'm not gonna go deep into this. The Humvees that don't have tops or even soft tops are gonna go for a lot less once the auction starts than the Humvees that do have soft tops. The soft tops are usually junk, and if you're not gonna keep your Humvee camo forever, it makes no sense to get one with a top anyway. You can easily buy a top off of eBay. Um, they are fairly expensive. You can research that yourself. Um, you know, depending on the type of Humvee you buy, like for instance, this one has a, a C pillar and probably the, you know, the bones you need for the top. Whereas one like, I don't know, this, well, actually that does have it. Uh, da, 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 keep going, keep going. One like this doesn't have anything for a top. So you're gonna have to buy the top and all of the supports and stuff. So research that, but I, I recommend you buy one without a top. You're gonna probably save a lot of money. Uh, you don't risk getting a damaged top anyway. You can just source a top for brand new off of eBay. You can buy camo, black, white, tan, all kinds of different colors. If you want to get a hard top, that's kind of a different story, I guess. Um, but you can also buy aftermarket hard tops. But anyway, so let's say we're going to bid on this Humvee here. A few quick things you want to look for. Okay. Um, you want to look at this. If this says M998, it's going to be an older Humvee that doesn't have overdrive and doesn't have, you know, park and doesn't have the 6.5. It'll have a 6.2. So, you know, the overdrive is the main thing that's highly desirable. If you just look at your pictures here <clears throat> and you get to the one with the shifter, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I don't know, shifter's kind of in this picture. You can see it has a P for park. That means it has all those things that you want. It has overdrive, it has park, it's got the 6.5. The newer Humvees, this, you know, these types of versions, there's also like mine's an M1123. There's probably, I think there's a few other versions. Those will be able to cruise comfortably at about 60 to 65 miles an hour on the highway. The older ones that only have three speeds with no overdrive uh, are gonna be screaming at about 55. So just keep that in mind. You probably wanna get a newer truck, not only just cause it's newer, but you're gonna get more features that'll make it, uh, you know, I daily drive mine. I would never be able to daily drive an M998. Um, the other thing you can just look right here, 6.5 turbo diesel, automatic transmission with park and overdrive. I have heard bad things about the turbo diesels, just FYI. Do your own research on that. I think the best motor out of all of them as far as reliability is the 6.5 non-turbo, if I remember correctly from my research, but go ahead and do your own. Okay, so the next thing you can do is go ahead and click place priority bid. From there, what you're gonna be able to do and I'm not gonna do it because it'll show my account information, but what you're gonna be able to do is exactly what it says, place priority bid. Now, the way the auctions work on GovPlanet is they only last literally five minutes, but that's also kind of wrong. I'll get to that in a second. 
Um, and in that time, the price will double and sometimes even triple depending on the type of Humvee you're bidding on. So don't expect to get any of these for like $5,000 or something like that. It's just not going to happen. So the what like for this one, you know, 4,800 bucks, it looks a little rough, but it's a newer version. Um, assuming there's nothing wrong with the turbo diesel, you know, you go through the description. I think it says everything basically works on it. Um, you know, it's missing some stuff. It's got a heavy wear on the drivetrain controls. So um, that's another thing I want to get to real quick. Quick side note, odometer, odometer 42 miles, drivetrain controls, heavy wear. Why would that be the case? Well, that's because they switch out odometers on Humvees all the time just because in the military, you know, the philosophy usually isn't repair, it's just replace. So if something goes wrong with the gauge cluster, they'll just put a new one in there or they'll put a new odometer. I don't know exactly what they do. I'm not a Humvee mechanic. Um, so you'll get Humvees that obviously don't have 42 miles on them, but they'll say stuff like that. So what you really want to look at is the other info. You want to look at the pictures. You know, there's certain things in the pictures you can look at that kind of give it away. Um, for instance, there's a lot of things. Here we go. Um, that really doesn't look that bad to me. It's rusting. Oh, that's taped up for some reason. Uh, but if these are all worn out and nasty, you know, you can tell it's probably been shifted into gear a billion times. Pedals. You know, look at how worn away this pedal looks. That means someone's been using it a lot. Uh, look at that gas pedal. It looks pretty used. So, um, you know, other things like the radiator. I don't know why this thing's got this weird tape all over it. Um, the radiator you want to look at. Well, I'm not going to try and get to all of it. But anyway, if you can see the radiator in these pictures, um, basically, if you see a radiator that's all chipped up and totally chipped up and destroyed by rocks, you can probably assume your Humvee's got a lot of miles on it. You might not want to bid on that Humvee. Um, you know, other things like that. The other thing you definitely want to check is blow by, and it should be in one of these. Blow by at idle. This is highly, highly important. So look at this. Blow by, blow by at idle, subjective visual observation, visible. So in this video, you guys can see that little bit of mist coming out of that radiator cap. That means that there's an issue with the engine and it's causing back, it's causing pressure from the, uh, from the top end to get into your cooling system. And you know, that could be like a seal, um, I don't know, maybe a cracked cylinder or something like that. Um, well, I've heard there's problems with the turbo diesels with stuff like that. So, you know, people who aren't very mechanically inclined are not gonna really know that that's important. And some sucker is probably gonna buy this thing for like 10 grand and have a junk motor in it. So definitely look into that. Um, but anyway, sorry, I went off on a tangent there. I just think that's important that you guys know that type of stuff. But what you're going to do is place, <clears throat> excuse me, place a priority bid. Assuming this one had nothing wrong with it, um, I wouldn't bid on this one in particular. But if it had nothing wrong, I would bid about probably ten grand, maybe eight, if you think you can get a good deal for some reason. Um, and that you know might be enough for you to win the auction. You're definitely going to want to be there when the auction starts. So. Fast forward to October 7th, it's 7.50. Keep an eye on it. Uh, eventually, you're probably gonna get outbid. If you, I think I put eight on mine. You're gonna get outbid, um, most likely. As soon as you get outbid, you know, if you really want the Humvee, you're gonna wanna bid it up. I wouldn't go over 15 on any of these. Um, mine was basically brand new. It had 500 miles on it. I believe that to actually be, or sorry, it had 300, but I believe that to actually be true just because the Humvee was spotless. It looked brand new. Nothing had hardly any wear on it. So, you know, I, I you got to kind of use your intuition on that. So I was willing to bid mine up to about 12.5. Now, once this auction ends, bear in mind, you haven't actually won. Unfortunately, what they're going to do is these little stupid 30 second extensions and they're going to do that four or five times or whatever it is where people will be able to outbid you. I thought I had won my auction about 9,500 bucks 
and I kept doing these 30 second extensions where I got outbid over and over again until I had to finally win mine at 12.5. So keep that in mind. Once you win your auction, you are gonna wait a really, really, really long time. But you can go ahead and pay for your Humvee in advance if you want. I think you've got, like, they give you two weeks to pay for it. Um, but after that, you're gonna wait a long, long, long time to clear your end of use certificate. And basically what that means, uh, I don't know, here we go. Buyers required to submit an EUC to be reviewed prior to removal of the item. First time buyers of all that stuff may experience an extended review period in the trade. And trust me, it is an extended review. So you're going to probably wait a good two or three months. You might get lucky and it might be less. You might get unlucky and it might be more. Uh, they'll give you a time frame, but it is going to be a very, very long time before your EUC clears and your Humvee is basically gonna sit in their lot and you won't be able to do anything with it until that period passes. And you know now they're saying there's even more delays because of COVID-19. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to get ready for that as well. Um, once that clears, you will finally be able to arrange your Humvee getting to your house. This was the company I ultimately got put with. Um, it was, I think, another broker, but it was called LTI Delivers. Uh, and I talked to this guy right here, Drew Heckert. He's an account manager. So give him a call. If Drew doesn't work there anymore, go ahead and just Google LTI Delivers. Give them a call. Highly recommend them. They were awesome to work with. There's no guarantee that the driver you're going to get is going to be awesome. Um, but these people are really well, you know, really nice to work with. They followed up with my driver several times. They arranged things. They kept me informed. Um, they were they always picked up the phone so I recommend um, I think it's a broker but I recommend this broker to get your Humvee to where you got to go they also had a pretty good price um, they got me with the driver who was willing to take I think 850 bucks and that was delivering it all the way from uh, Albany Georgia to st. Louis Missouri so I was okay with that um, and the Humvee got there in one piece and the driver um, seems like a good guy so I recommend you go with them. Um, you know, you can expect to pay anywhere from 500 to 1200 bucks, depending on how far you're shipping your your vehicle. But uh, they're really good. So, okay. So after you do that, the final step really is going to be um, just waiting on your form SF97 to come into your house or be mailed to you. Um, the SF97 is really important for getting your Humvee street legal. I'm just trying to see, here we go. The Humvee sells with the clean SF-97. So um, at least for in Missouri, for all intents and purposes, the SF-97 is sort of like a title. Um, you'll need to use that to eventually get your Humvee street legal. I will get that into that in the, you know, getting your Humvee street legal video. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video, um, but make sure it sells with an SF-97 this takes a really 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 long time to get to you i think for me it took like i don't even know um five months after i purchased the humvee uh, maybe four and a half or four or something like that it was um a good month or two after i was able to finally get the thing delivered to my house so it takes a really long time just keep that in mind um, but yeah make sure you get your sf 97 and that's really the final step so I hope this video was helpful. It was still longer than I would have liked it to be, um, but I wanted to make sure that I was able to kind of educate you guys on some of the pitfalls and help you avoid that. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed it. If it was helpful, please give me a like, please subscribe. Um, you can follow my other Humvee videos. I'm off-roading it like crazy now and having a lot of fun with it and upgrading the heck out of it. And uh, it doesn't even look like the same Humvee it did when it came in, but I have a build series on that and an off-roading series on that that you can follow. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you for the support.